think most people would agree that nakshatras are one of the most special and unique components of Vedic astrology, but they're also the most mysterious. And, you know, I was recently asked, like, where do you have any good nakshatra books for applying them or the techniques or something? And I was thinking about it and I don't really have many recommendations. There's really not many good books on nakshatra application of techniques that I know of. If you are watching this and you know of a great one, please let me know. Um, and it's even more unfortunate, sort of, because the best, a lot of our best uh, Jyotish Shastra texts, like uh, Brihat Prasha Hor Shastra and Jaimini Upadesha Sutras, both basically say um, they basically say uh, how should I put it? Both of those texts already say in the beginning go read the expert sources on nakshatras to know about those so like I'm not gonna teach you about those really so it's unfortunate because Prashtra doesn't really teach us about the nakshatras in that book a lot of people might not even know that unless they read the book but in the very beginning he's like this is about uh, you know aura like horoscopy and um, go to the sources for of non the experts on nakshatras for those you know questions and then the same thing with the Jaimini Upadesha Sutras. There's nothing about nakshatras really in the whole text except I think it says like Ora Siddha Udaya or something like that, which basically one of the ways that could be transplanted, translated would mean become accomplished with nakshatras as well, like in order to do this. Or it also is implying to use Vimshatari Dasha, um, the nakshatra Dasha. Um, So I think actually Vimshatari Dasha is the main thing that Vedic astrologers are really using with the nakshatras is this fascinating and unique timing system um, that's based on the nakshatras. When it comes to actual like predictive practice, uh, it's just people just have this idea that nakshatras are like are working a certain way or whatever. But when you really test things out and really try um, those techniques a lot of times they don't work that well um, or they don't work out in that like really great scientifically repeatable way and a lot of people that study nakshatras are just like oh like all barani people are gonna have like all these things and, and, and it's just like too too much you're trying to define for just one planetary placement you know um so nakshatras are very hard to integrate into our practice sometimes um properly in my opinion and I don't see a lot of people really properly integrating shatras, but I, I I've found some success with it, and I'm still I'm still figuring it out, you know. Uh, but I, I wanted to to start talking about that and maybe teaching some ideas about that. But beforehand, I wanted to you know cover my ideas about nakshatras so that I don't have to repeatedly answer a lot of the same questions, and I can just refer people to this video basically. <laughs> um, so when it comes to nakshatras, uh, I really think that it's best to calculate them equatorially and not ecliptically. Uh, and, you know, you can read about that online. Um, I know Michael Reed has a, has a nakshatra course that where he, 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 he describes that as well, if you're not familiar with this idea. Um, but if you look at the diagrams and things, the way that the ecliptic is, it's at a slant, and the way that the, if you depending on whether you calculate your nakshatras equatorially or ecliptically some things can be different like I know traditionally my Venus's nakshatra shifted when I started calculating it equatorially but it really makes a lot more sense and the nakshatras have nothing to do with the ecliptic which is like a, a slanted path um, then the nakshatras can be up high or down low you know what I mean and it's 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 like when you actually start observing them with the naked eye which I have done um, I can I've seen pretty much every nakshatra with the naked eye consciously at this point. Um, there's a couple ones that I still haven't seen, but just like seriously, just like two or three. I think it's um, Ashlesha or like one other one that I um, that wasn't as easy to see because uh, you know it takes a year for you to be able to see them all. <laughs> um, and uh, anyways, when you look at them, they're not like just this straight line of them like you would think. You know, like um, Revity is right on the ecliptic though. The Revity is a good one to find like right on the ecliptic, but then you know right 
you know, Purva Bhadrapada and Atura Bhadrapada, they're like this weird side angle thing going on. They're not like just, they're not just evenly spaced along the ecliptic, like you might think. Um, you know, all of them, they're all just kind of like random stars that are like scattered along the, um, the sky. And especially Shravana, like Shravana is ridiculous. Like Shravana is, is so far up north, it's insane, you guys. And, um, Shravana is Altair or Aquila, I think, if you're, you know, in astronomy. And so, like, when I, when I went out to uh, my teacher's place in September and was looking through a telescope and observing this stuff with my own eyes and, and using the telescope and finding these nakshatras, I mean, it was ridiculous because at that time Mars was in Shravana and Mars is, like, here. And then Shravana is like way over there. It's literally like two and a half signs away in an upward, opposite, weirder direction. And, you know, everybody's like, ooh, Mars and Shravana, like on the internet, or I read about it, you know, or people are like, ooh, Mars and Shravana, blah, 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 do this, or that, that means this, or that. And I'm like, I wonder if you guys have really looked at this. Like, have you really seen, like, Mars is here and Shravana is way over there? It's got nothing to do with Mars right now. You know what I mean? Like, it's basically got nothing very little to do like that at least that star Altair has nothing to do with Mars right now you know what I mean um, it's further it's like more than a sign away but the thing is that Altair or Shravan is so high up that if you looked from the North Pole and you just took the the celestial sphere and you just divided it all up by 27 then even though that star is so high up it would fall down to the same sliver that Mars is in if that makes sense if not, you know, Google these diagrams and things. They, there should be at least more than one source for this on the internet now. Um, uh, Ernst was the first person to teach this, so he definitely has that material. Um, but basically, yeah, that's 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 an issue, you know. And, and so we need to kind of understand that the nakshatras most likely were not about a single star, and they were most likely about like. Uh, portions of space and the stars marked them and that makes sense because the stars are called like yoga taras which means like a marker or the brightest yoga the brightest thing the moon's going to yoke to and unite that at that night at that 24-hour period um tara just means like it's literally like saying er like great er like great greater would be like yoga yoga tara you know and then also tama is it is like saying is so like great greater greatest um is like like say like priya the word beloved priya priyatara priyatama you see what i'm saying and so the yogatara thing just means um the greater star like the brighter star you know what i mean that it's united to but I don't know, I just think we need to keep this in mind. I, but at the same time, like, the star as the abode of the deity seems really cool. You know what I mean? So I'm really into that idea, and I like it, and I think it works. But at the same time, I think that those deities rule that whole, like, kind of uh, portion of that energetic whole sliver of the sky. You know what I mean? For each, for the earthlings, for us earthlings at least. And so that's at least kind of how I'm thinking about it and working with it, and it's working well so far. But there is, a, I don't think that it's just like, okay, this one star has the energy or something. And, and you know what I mean? I don't know. It's just hard. We really don't know. It's mysterious. Um, so that's what, so I can't say that I'm really the authority, but these are just things that I think people need to hear about and be discussing um, when they're studying nakshatras. And if you come to me and find my channel, then I hope that you appreciate hearing this. Um, even the word nakshatra is so old, no one knows what it means. Seriously, no one knows what it means. Um, there are cases made for it, but they're not really that great cases. I think Dr. Arjun Pai has made the best case for what it would mean um, as like a map of the mind or a tool of the mind, sort of. Uh, but it's, it's really just a word that's so old, we don't even know like where it comes from in if it even is Sanskrit which it probably is but um, it's just that old and nakshatras are the part of Vedic astrology that is truly Vedic because they're all they go back to the the Rig Veda you know what I mean all this stuff but as such they're also like so steeped into the religion 
and the culture of Hinduism and the way it was at those times that you've got to wonder if in the future, you know, all these stars are shifting and moving at some point. And um, yeah, you would just wonder like, if does that, is that how it works all the time or is it in a certain yuga? I don't know. Um, so I try, I think you need to be very careful when you're researching nakshatras in general and testing them out and you have to test them out a lot more thoroughly. Um, and then also know your zodiac stuff pretty well too, because otherwise you might just be seeing something that your Rashi's and normal chart stuff is, is accounting for, but we didn't know if we don't know that stuff as well either. So. Oh man, nakshatras are just a real mess. The more I've learned, the less I know about nakshatras, basically. When it comes to the year length for Vimshatari Dasha, I definitely suggest using Sora year length instead of nakshatra year length or the other options for year lengths as well. And that will shift your dashas a little bit. Um, yeah, and uh, so I think that in terms of prediction, all the different qualities are very useful, like steady, unsteady, moving, changing, fixed, you know, Datu, Mula, Jiva. I've already made two videos about that. You can go back and look for those if, if you want about finding, um, you know, the Datu, Mula, Jiva placement of Ketu and Rahu is very critical. I find that, still find that working really, really well a year later, just so you all know. Um, and then focusing on the deity is really important. And I think that the planetary lord is significant, but I kind of go back and forth with that. And I still don't really know how to how that works because, well, that's a whole other thing in its own. So anyways, uh, these are just some ideas about nakshatras I felt like sharing with you guys. And uh, it can be really fun to study them and look at them at night. I really do advise that. And, you know, like visually meditating on them and, and seeing them at night and oh that's Castor and Pollux okay you know like I, I, I see that oh all right that's Punarvasu okay oh that's um you know Maga and and all this uh it, it's, it's a very good and very good idea and you can you know use there's a lot of phone apps these days that make it easy to look at this stuff um with your phone at night so I don't know hope that's interesting for you guys thanks